they asked me, they said, Rachel, do you want us to tell them that you are legally blind? I said, no, nah, don't tell them anything. I want to be judged just on my voice like everyone else. It meant a lot to me to know that other people loved what I do too. I'm Rachel Leocar. I'm 25 years old from South Australia. I'm a singer-songwriter and I'm legally blind from a condition called retinitis pigmentosa. All right. I have to remember where I put everything on the benches, otherwise knock it off. <laughs> retinitis pigmentosa is a degenerative genetic eye condition it means I have tunnel vision, short-sightedness, uh, night blindness, and this deteriorates over time. So I had a bit more vision when I was younger, and I think I have about 5% now. It's hard for me to describe what my condition is and how it compares to normal vision because I haven't had normal vision before. I remember I used to think that I was normal and everyone else was just making a big deal out of nothing. Oops, sometimes things fall off. <laughs> I noticed that my sight was deteriorating quite rapidly when I was about 15 years old. I was tripping over things more. I wasn't seeing obstacles. I would just knock into people. I was still in a bit of denial as well, even throughout high school. I didn't want to admit that I had an issue. I did get frustrated and annoyed at things. The sight deterioration was more an annoyance than everything, a fear of missing out, FOMO. I feel like I know what I look like, but I wouldn't be able to draw myself or describe myself. With the little bit of vision I have, I have seen sunsets, even if they're not quite clear. They're almost even more beautiful because they have that haziness. I've always used my ears and my other senses. Stay down here. I've always been a pretty independent person, but Ella, my guide dog has just given me another level of it and given me a lot more confidence in myself. Ella is extremely smart. She will remember my regular routes gone around the place, so she'll lead me towards whatever I do regularly. You always love the camera, Rach. You love photos. Take a look at this lovely photo you're on a, at a playground. Oh. Do you remember that age when you started? Well, I actually spotted it when I opened the curtain when she was six months old, and I noticed that she wasn't following me around the room, and I'd wave my hand in front of her, and her eyes wouldn't move. She was just like looking into space, and I kind of thought, hmm. Something's going on here. So we had her looked at and, and an MRI confirmed that she had retinitis pigmentosa. It was more like, what does this mean? We've never known anybody with this really before. We knew that her sight was going to go. We didn't know how fast it was going to happen. They could only guess. She was very happy all the time as a child. 
and didn't stop singing. Yep, sang all the time, talked all the time. I grew up singing, really. I loved listening to all the musicals and things. I would sing along. Mum loved singing to me as a kid, and we always used to sing and dance as a family. And it's just such fond memories I have growing up of being at my nonna and nonna's house and singing in Italian. And then when she started singing back, I just knew she had a beautiful voice. She started singing to herself with friends, around family. When I was little, I would see things on the ground easier because I, I was just, you know, next to them. Whereas now I'm much higher. It's harder to see things on the ground, so sometimes I walk like that with my head down a bit so I can see what's in front of me, try not to trip over things. Of course, I've got Ella now that helps. Anything? Could I ever see the stars? I don't think so. I remember not I used to be able to see aeroplanes in the sky. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to see, I don't oh, look I up and <laughs> sort of follow the sound. You sure they weren't birds? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, it doesn't matter if you saw <laughs> something. <laughs> if I saw birds, that's still impressive to me. Sure. Um, yeah, so I'd follow it along the sky and now I can just hear them, but I can't see them anymore. I just try to follow them, but obviously the sound uh, is behind it because mm. it doesn't mm. quite travel the same speed. Um, so I think I miss it. We did want her to become independent. We didn't want to hold her here forever. I do respect it when she says, OK, Mum, you know, I need to do my own stuff. But it is hard when you've done it all your life with her, looked out for everything, done everything with her. But she was the one that wanted to try everything. I knew her vision was going to go if she kept busy with music and learned to love music. That would be really good for her. Music was important for someone like Rachel to have. Music was a big comfort for me, especially in high school and while I came to terms with my disability. I would always go to the piano after school and play and it was something that I could show the world that I can do and that I could do well. There's a lot of people that will tell you what you can and can't do as a person with a disability. I like to focus on what I can do and music was one of those things that I loved. So I've been working on a Christmas album for the last two years or so. I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy with how it's turning out. It's out on October 25th, just in time for Christmas. OK, are you ready? Ready. Let's go. Quentin was the first producer I ever worked with, and now things have come full circle working with him again, and he's just fabulous. I feel started with my Italian heritage. I won a competition to go over to Italy to sing on Rayona television. And when I returned from Italy, I was a professional singer. So that was my job, singing in the Italian community. When Christ was auditioned for The Voice and I heard blind auditions so I thought oh this has got to be some sort of sign. I got through, all four coaches turned around to coach me, went through with Delta Goodrum, ended up coming third and touring with Delta following that 
going to Italy. I was performing all over Australia, overseas. That year was the busiest year of my life. Sometimes. If I don't have ice cream now, I I'll, ice die. Cream or I'll die. <laughs> then he heard I a first song. met Chris at one of my gigs, and there was matinee shows. So um, once everyone else had left, Chris was one of the last ones to say congratulations, and I invited him to lunch with my family because we were having a bit of a celebration for the end of the tour, and we got each other's number and thought he was pretty cute. So. <laughs> started talking and then he asked me out a couple of months later. I watched The Voice. So everyone in Adelaide knew who Rachel was. And um, I went along to one of her shows in Broadview, where I grew up. And uh, yeah, afterwards, I was keen to, to say hello. That every day he went out into the <laughs> forest and listened to it. I think you had a plan. You were like, yeah, I'll just wait till the end. Yeah, so Maybe probably... we'll get to hang out. <laughs> me and John just... Chris was pretty hard to read when I first met him but he sounded like he was cute. I don't know that sounds funny, but he had a nice voice. When he was thus standing behind a tree, he saw that an enchantress came there. He wouldn't always say what he was thinking, so for me not being able to see facial expressions, it was hard for me to work out if he was smiling. That's a skein <laughs> of silk. Skin. We're on the same wavelength, I think, now. He'll start off a joke and I'll always know what he's about to say. I'll know what he's referencing. Um, I'll know what he's going to say before he says it now. <laughs> to... We even finish each other's... Sandwiches. For a long time afterwards, happy and contented. The end. Yay! <laughs> Rachel told us about a year ago that she was ready to move out of home. I kind of thought, oh, she's just too busy. How are we going to work this out? It's been a few months and she has moved out and she's done really, really well. I'm really proud of her. She's hanging out her own washing and cooking and cleaning, doing everything herself. making my famous spaghetti bolognese. It's pretty much mum's recipe, and I'm pretty sure she got it from my nonna. Yeah, I think these are OK. I haven't really thought about a time where I wasn't able to use a knife. People worry about me cutting my fingers off. But I can generally feel where the knife is and I don't touch the point of it before I press down and I try to keep my fingers out of the way and line up the cut before, before I actually cut down. Just need the jar opener, if I can find it. One there. Usually I'll put things back in the same place, but uh, it seems to be there. Um, might be in here. how important it is to have all the things you need out first so that I don't get into this situation. Oh, no, that's not it. Chris? Yes? Where's the jar opener? Let's have a look. Oh, my God, I just found it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this happens every time. Got it. It did take me a long time to be more comfortable and understanding Rachel's disability. 
She's always been honest about what help she does need and what she doesn't need. And it's just been about being a team. Smells good. How's it looking? I don't know. How's it looking to you? Looks yum. It's like a little brown yet. <laughs> yeah, nearly. There's a little bit of pink. Yeah. Just on a bit. Okay. Give it a good stir. Yum, I'm excited. Yay, yeah, spaghetti! Spaghetti! Ready for spaghetti? Yes. Luke helps me a lot with a lot of things, like my shows and also my video clips. I shoot a lot of Rachel's music videos. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, just general tech stuff when she needs that kind of thing. It's like, oh. Yeah, super handy. And he's very good at AV stuff, so I'm taking him um, to all my venues just to make sure everything runs smoothly. He yeah. will probably run the show. And we've always been very close and yeah. grew up picking on you. I'm sorry, Luke. Yeah, well, I picked on you a little. <laughs> Not no. as much as you picked on me, no, though, I don't no, think. No. <laughs> I got away with it, that's why. Cool. Cheese Looks yum. Mm. Thanks, Rach. Thank you. Um, so. We should probably have a rehearsal for your show. Yeah, sure. Um, Did you want to do that at the theatre or here or...? Uh, maybe the first one here, because we're still mm -hmm. not, not out the nuts and bolts, so I can just connect to your TV. Um, how's oh, this, okay, is yep. Thursday convenient for you? Thursday... Yep. Alright, let's try like and make it for that. Twelve or something again. You led me to the table it can get quite hectic and then there are quiet times of the year. So I think that's pretty typical with any musician. Things just pop up suddenly and then there might be nothing for like a month. So and I sort of panic in those times a little bit when it's quiet because I always want to be going and doing something. Same water. Today I've got an Italian gig. And I've been going back and forth from set to set and <laughs> trying to figure out if this is the right order, but I think it is. The order can really make a difference because if you do certain songs at certain times, it can be the difference between the crowd paying attention and not paying attention. Okay, press stop. I started using the computer with the white background and just normal writing, but I just had so much eye strain. I was looking at it and squinting and really trying to focus because the rest of it was just so bright. Yes. Okay. I most struggled with dark colours, so dark blue, dark green dark red and black. It makes it harder to put outfits together, I think. I feel like I have set outfits that I use as my go-to. I have staples, but I try to wear a lot of black and white just to make sure that I do get those colours matching. Hmm. Cool. My dad's taking me to a sound check. I'm very lucky, he drives me around a lot. He's giving up his... Uh, footy team's local grand final <laughs> today <laughs> to be my gig, so... To our house. Are we ready to go now? Yeah. All right. I always have my parents with me. Mum's my hair and makeup person and stylist. Dad drives a lot. And they're both very supportive. I've always loved music and connected with music. I can't really think of a, a certain point that I discovered music. It's just always been a part of my life. One, two, two, two. Yeah. That's a great mic. <laughs> I've always used my ears and my other senses and I just really connected with it on an emotional level as well. I said enough. 
I just really loved it. So it was something that I pursued. And take me home. When she gets on stage, one of the big things I have to do is point to her where the crowd's going to be so she sings to the crowd. So she may not see him, but she'll turn her head and make out she sings to him, and they think they're singing to her. It's a great job. I get to hear my daughter sing virtually every day, and uh, it's the best job in the world for a dad. Mum helps me a lot with matching things, especially, just because sometimes I can get gold and silver mixed up. I think I started styling Rachel's makeup and doing her when she started singing around 15. Well, what we thought would be a quiet month has been a very busy month at the end of the day. I taught Rachel most of the basics of what to do with her eyes and feel where she should put colour on the, as shadow. OK, just close again. I feel what the makeup artists are doing if I'm ever interstate or anything and mum's not with me, I have to trust someone else to do it. And I just think, oh, you haven't done enough of this because I can feel what they're doing and I'll feel my eyelashes and I'll go, oh, they're not thick enough. I can't feel the mascara on there. So it's good that I can have mum to do my hair and makeup, someone I trust that I know will do a really good job. With Rachel's vision impairment, I knew it was going to be harder for her to choose colours of clothes that make sure they match. You know, hair looks okay, makeup looks okay. It's quite easy for me to just drop back into, oh, I'll just wear whatever and I'll go out without makeup because I can't tell. I think it's always important to, you know, look your best when you have to go out, um, you know, dress, hair. I think it's just uh, it's a reflection on yourself. So it's nice to feel good too. Yeah, you always when do feel, you feel a bit good. Better. You have a bit more confidence. Mm. Yeah. remember the people that supported me first and for me that was the Italian community so I'll always respect them by doing gigs for them every now and then and I love to sing in Italian. That's the first language other than English I sang in so it holds a very special place in my heart. Are there any stage lines? I'm very proud of and my beautiful family is here with me and Italians are all about family aren't we? Not only do I love the feeling I get when I get on stage and start singing but I love that I can bring out feelings in other people as well. I just feel the atmosphere change when that music comes on. Everyone connects and that's what's so special about music. I 
love it when people come up to me and they say they've recognised me from The Voice or a gig around the place. It's a really nice feeling, especially if they want a photo or something or even recount an experience they've had of a performance. That really means a lot. I pretty much started with the Italian community, so they feel like they're all my family now. They always come up to me and say, like, Rachel, do you remember me? And Rachel, do you remember when you sang here? And, and of course, my nonna, who's my best marketing person and biggest fan. I don't really picture myself in the future very often because so many things in my life have been unpredictable. It didn't really register with me that I could lose my vision completely. I haven't really travelled enough. That is one scary thing just fear of missing out on those things uh, that I could have seen before, perhaps. I think whatever comes, comes. I'll continue with music. Hopefully I can pass on what I've learnt in music to my kids one day and my Italian recipes. <laughs> YouTube was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.